That's that, that's that 600 back on there. Um, we are currently ascending at Well, yeah, we can't. It'll be lunch, so we have to time it right at right at the change, I think. Question, another ROV question. What are the limits on how fast we can ascend? Yeah, um, we're generally limited by the amount of samples that we take on. So, um, gravity limited by weight. Yeah. We yeah. also are thrusting up, or we're using our uh, vertical thrusters in order to achieve a vertical ascent. Um, and if you notice that there's this large box on our starboard side, um, that's actually impeding a lot of that kind of laminar, if you will, <laughs> flow through the thrusters. Um, and that actually can impede our vertical thrust so much that if we do some lateral movements um, while, while ascending, we can actually change that profile going through the thruster and achieve a faster vertical ascent. And are both ROVs ascending using their own power source? Uh, yeah, so the, both ROVs are um, ascending. Well, sorry. So uh, Hercules is using thrusters to ascend. And then Argus, we are just winching in on the 6-8 cable. Ah. Um, but when it comes to power sources, they all run off the same power that comes from the ship. Um, that goes down that 6-8 cable and gets... Uh, also shared with her with the tether so yeah the dance of many One more question. Uh, a viewer asked, so the ship is not pulling on Hercules, correct? Because we have Argus tethered above? Yep. Correct. We can, if need be, pull up Hercules uh, with the ship, with the, with the cable, uh, the same way we pull up Argus. Uh, it's just a bit uh, hard on the, on the tether, so we try not to do it when we, we don't have to, but for know if there was a dead vehicle recovery and we needed to uh, recover Hercules and you know we lost communications or power uh, we could just pull up on the cables on the uh, 6 eight cable on the winch and recover both vehicles one of our viewers wants to know what everyone's favorite fish is from this current dive oh the chonoclops <laughs> Allosaurus. <laughs> I vote for chonoclops <laughs> Sorry, China Clubs. <laughs> I switched sides. We've been seeing a lot of the China Clubs, so perhaps yeah. time to retire it from favorites. It has such a cute little attitude. <laughs> I like the landing gear. That's my favorite part.
anybody know what the coldest temperature we ex experienced was on this dive? Can, can you repeat that? What was the coldest temperature we uh, found on this dive? Um, we can look it up. I'm guessing it's around 1.8 is when we're seeing typically deep ocean. 1.8 C, sorry. Um, I'm looking on the Grafana page, which you can also get to from our website. Go on the NautilusLive.org, hit more data. Uh, we have a lot of graphs and plots up there. Um, what am I looking at? That's only an hour ago. Thank you. See you, Megan. Uh, 1.5-ish okay. around there, C. Burr. <laughs> We still got a hype dream going. Or... <laughs> Question that we missed from earlier, because there was so much cool stuff to talk about, was what's your favorite sea creature? We have the same one ready. What is it? Oh, should we guess? <laughs> mm. Yes, you should guess. <laughs> Chris Gorgia. No. <laughs> Not even close. Deep star, yeah. Chana Clops. What? Oh, did you just say it and I wasn't listening? Was <laughs> that was me. I guess Deep Star, yeah. Not That's really. one of them, but that's not the one. <laughs> Merman. Uh, Dumbo Octopus. Um, Should we play a guessing game? Is it a <laughs> mammal? <No. laughs> Is it uh, benthic? Yeah. Benthic, yes. Is it m uh, mobile or sessile? Highly mobile. Highly mobile. One would say a beautiful dancer of the ocean. Oh, oh the polychaete? Uh, maybe it's a polychaete, yes. I don't, oh. I mean, that's as far as I can go. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't go species specific on that one. <laughs> Ready, do you want to reveal? Yeah? All right, well, the answer is a flamboyant squid worm. Flamboyant <laughs> squid worm. Excellent. You guys didn't guess that. Flamboyant <laughs> that. squid worm. Oh, my God. Flamboyant. They're down in the Galapagos, and... They have a mesmerizing dance, and sorry, I'm not selling this very well. Think of just the most beautiful worm <laughs> you've ever seen, with long tentacles on it, and beautiful little cilia out the side that's like fluttering in the yeah. headlights. Flamboyantly. Flamboyantly. But the yeah, it's the 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 tentacles coming out of the head. 
I mean, it looked like it looks like two creatures fighting each other. Oh. One of them's dancing, and the other one's just ugly. <laughs> but it's one creature. And then my favorite, one of my favorite parts about it. Well, we sampled one, and it was the. I think it was the. It was recently described, but we we got the first sample. But we were really hyper focused on it, zoomed in, following it in the water column, and this whole time we were looking for vent structures. And then we're like, okay, that's enough of that. And as soon as we zoomed out and changed our focus, right the backdrop of it was this smoking vent, black smoker. It was awesome. Yeah, that was incredible. And the flamboyant squid worm led <laughs> us to it. <laughs> she was whispering the whole way. Yeah. <laughs> What about you guys in the van? Favorite, favorite creature of the deep? Uh, I'd say mine is Riftia. Yeah. Oh, giant yeah. tube worm. One of the things I like about it is that it has no mouth and no butt. <laughs> it has a <laughs> organ inside that it keeps... Uh, Trophosome, right? Yeah. keeps uh, microbes in. It brings them food. They grow and die and feed it. And uh, it's really cool. They're terrifying to handle when you... Like, because of their bitey parts? No, they just like, they recoiled. Uh, it's a, yeah. it's a very uncomfortable <laughs> creature. <laughs> also a bit stinky, yeah? Stinky, Sulfur. it's like way too big. <laughs> Suggestive body parts. <laughs> recoiled. How big around are they, like, compared to something we, we would know? Kind of a big around as a cupcake for the big ones. Yeah. Wow. Sarah, you got a favorite sea creature? I don't know. It's hard to pick. Um, and I haven't seen a huge variety, so I'll go with the Chana Cups for now. Yeah, we seem pretty focused on the deep sea, but some pretty great ones in the upper ocean as well. Oh, I thought this. I oh, thought was it? it was. Deep sea? <laughs> you can't compare them together. Well, we I have like time. We can go around again. <laughs> Jake, did you have one? Uh, I have always liked beluga whales. Beluga. The way they 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 like they're acoustic. Communications are pretty cool. Like their vocalizations, they like deform this thing on their head to like change the way they, I don't know, like their frequency of and their mm. pitch of their sounds. Oh. And then they're very also like fun. Like they're at a, I've always gone to the Mystic Aquarium in Connecticut and they have a beluga whale exhibit and yeah. they're just very interactive and like uh, playful and. <laughs> Uh, definitely very attuned with their surroundings, so it's they're just smart creatures. Very cool. It's like a, a it's like a fat on their on their head. Yeah, it's like this. It's like an oil filled. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do they do beam forming? I, I, I think that's kind of what they're doing. Cool. I don't know. I, I forget the beam science behind that. I've looked into it, but. Luke they can do all, all these cool things. Luke is also have an articulated neck. You're the only one of the, uh, oh, oh. the porpoise family that uh, actually have a neck that can move. They can actually move their head yeah. up and down and around. Hmm. That's interesting. See them offshore in Anchorage all the time, see them in pods. Oh, so neat. They're very easy to spot because they're light gray to white. <laughs> At the exhibit, they'll catch unsuspect, unsuspecting um, visitors and scare them. Like, they'll come up really close in the glass and just kind of sit there. And then all of a sudden, they'll just make this, like, big face. <laughs> and just, like, <laughs> and then everyone will, like, scream like little kids. <laughs> right away. Hmm. Only a face the mother could love? Is that the expression for it, then? <laughs> or Jake. Yep. Or Jake, Jake loves it. <laughs> I laugh at the little kids. No. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Dave, how about you over there? What's yours? Oh, gosh. Uh, one of the first things that I saw on my first expedition, which was in 2005, uh, and that was a Dumbo octopus. Oh, uh, nice. Dr. Ballard was talking about Dumbo octopus last night, and there's several different kinds of them and that kind of stuff. But the, uh, the first one I have, uh, I saw in 2005, uh, and we were in, uh, we were in a standard descent just like this, and it all of a sudden swam across in front of the camera. And uh, I hadn't ever seen anything like that before. <laughs> That was my first time out, and mm. uh, it was just flapping along with the giant uh, uh, fins on the top of its head. And uh, we have some great video footage archived on our website. If yeah, we'd like to see that. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very fun and, and interesting and, and strange animal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So how many kilometers did this dive cover? That's a good question. I'm going to answer that as soon as I take a look at our dive track. Hmm, a lot. <laughs> Seven kilometers, I think. Something, right. something like that. Nice. Pretty rough. One of our viewers says, no love for crustaceans. And I will say, this is Lisa. I'm the science teacher. I have a poster about the mantis shrimp hanging right behind my desk. Done by the oatmeal. The oatmeal is a cartoonist online. has a, an incredible tribute to the mantis shrimp. And oh, I yes. have a signed poster by him. <laughs> I've seen that one. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, the mantis shrimp has a lot of really <clears throat> fantastic innovations in one right. shrimp, right? Their sight, their punch. Mm -hmm. Their vision ability yeah. is amazing. There's a lot of um, work in uh, bio-inspired materials. Right, that look right. at the mantis shrimp as well as their um, source of inspiration, I suppose, or the model organism for a lot of uh, studies, especially related to their punch. We have a viewer who's asking what you led, what led all of you to this job. Give us a, a let us know which position you're specifically thinking about. And we'll have somebody talk about that. Someone asked how the food has been on the ship. It's been great. I love the fresh fruit and the tater tots the best. Adam, didn't you have a song you were going to practice? Oh, for us? Captain Kangaroo song. All right, are you ready for this? <laughs> yeah. So you know, the captain did the, did this one just for me, mm. and it goes, "What do we have at Adam's party? <laughs> we have ice cream. <laughs> what do we have at? No, don't. I'm, I'm not sorry, done. Sorry. He's not done. He's not finished, everybody. What do we have at Adam's party?" Oh God! What was next? <laughs> <laughs> That's that not part, part of the song. song. No, no. Yeah, the captain needed a little break. Oh, do I still have to do this? Uh, it went on like that. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Adam! 
Your birthday is today. That was just for you. Just for me. There's only on one Adam. 45. It's going to be <laughs> stuck in my head all day. Yeah. What, do we, what do we have at Adam's party? But you can put your own name in there. That's the thing. I think the captain actually did this for more than just me. Okay. Oh. Although there not. was, I, I'm pretty sure there wasn't a, what do we have at Rennie's party? Yeah, I don't know if they, <laughs> I don't know how, how, how well the names were expanded. Can you put tater, tater tots in my song? Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so is this a show or something? I have, I'm Google searching this guy, this oh, person yeah. right now. And I've never heard it of it. It kind of looks creepy now that you look back on it, but kinda. it was okay back then. Mine is an understatement. <laughs> 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 I'm showing my younger bunkmate. She was a little freaked out. <laughs> oh, no. That's a mugshot of Captain Kanger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay, stop. <laughs> I honestly, I don't really remember <laughs> the show. Okay, now we're backtracking. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have no previous association with the captain. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote you a song, yeah. pretty personal song. Yeah. <laughs> Just remember, if you say the wrong thing, ping pong balls might fall out of the ceiling. <laughs> Was that on the show? Yes. Oh. It was like when there was a punchline. They fell from the ceiling and bounced Weird. everywhere. It better have been on the show. Otherwise, that's a very <laughs> strange thing. <to> do. <laughs> I think Mr. the puppet Mr. Moose was always involved with ping pong balls. I actually now am wondering if that was an inspiration for Krusty the Clown. Uh. Why do I not know any of these characters? Krusty, <laughs> Krusty you're, the Clown. You are the clown? You're young. Yeah. <laughs> Is it, he was on Not The Simpsons. Simpsons. Yeah. Oh. I didn't watch The Simpsons. Get a new. You've got several Data years worth of, of homework. <laughs> when I was in Nicaragua, there were Krusty the Clown burger stands. Oh, yeah? What? Yeah. Wow. And it what? had Krusty, Krusty the Clown out front. <laughs> I don't think trademark meant much. All right, here's a question for our navigator. How did you get to your position? What brought you here? Um, Captain Kangaroo. Let's see. I, uh, I studied <coughs> geography, both for my undergrad and I have a master's focusing on more of the physical geography and, and uh, technical geospatial data side of things uh, and remote sensing. So remote sensing is anytime you're collecting data from afar. Um, so in my case, I was working with LIDAR, so uh, sending pulses of light um, and collecting distance information to create three-dimensional models. And I was in the, my master's work was in the Andes on rock glaciers and paraglacial features uh, using terrestrial laser scanning and also some work in other cryospheric regions, like up in the Arctic on sea ice. And then an internship came along on EV Nautilus um, to work with multi-beam sonar, which is similar in principle, except it's uh, sending acoustic pulses um, instead of light, and it's through water instead of air. Um, but the end result is the same. It's a point cloud, which is uh, you know, X, Y, Z uh, positions in space to, to uh, create a model of uh, terrain. Um, so I came out for a mapping specific cruise for seafloor mapping and uh, eventually kept coming back out in various positions on the ship. I had, I worked in the wet lab for a bit um, then transitioned into ROV navigation and still all the while doing seafloor mapping. And no so. coral expert. And, <laughs> and now <laughs> I guess at coral identification. <laughs> so mostly land-based and then I, I actually didn't focus on ocean at all in, in my studies and now it's kind of what I do for a career. Were you part of collecting the LiDAR data or did you just process? Oh, I was, yeah, I was collecting. I was okay. out there in the field doing a lot of uh, terrestrial laser stuff. Not, not a lot of airborne. Oh. 
Okay. Returns off of ice can be hard though, yeah, because yeah, it's near IR, so it gets absorbed by the water. Yeah, we well, we were using 532 nanometers, so oh. the green the green's okay. Hmm. Um, but that that was like a this comprehensive project. We also had some rate uh radar and um. Ground, yeah, GPR, ground, ground penetrating, mm -hmm. ice penetrating in that instance. Trying to understand the depth of the ice? Yeah, the thickness of the ice. So we were out in Utkiagovic, um, which is used to be Barrow, Alaska, and uh, went out on snow machines. Very good pronunciation, too, by the way. Oh, thank you. Um, they were just transitioning the name when I was there. And... Uh, yeah, out on the sea ice, measuring the thickness and kind of getting a sense of the the roughness. And the, uh, so we had a bunch of local things, ground truth, truth thing, and then airborne and um, some actual drilling as well. And as a larger patch to compare against uh, satellite sensors no, what I kind of drilling manual manual <laughs> like augers yeah okay. wow i bet that's a somewhat there's a, some commonality in all our stories in that uh getting out into the field is a real exciting part that gets us kind of hooked on yeah uh, the stuff we're doing it's just really great to see different parts of the world be part of a team have a singular focus it's awesome i think one of, yeah one of the most exciting parts about remote sensing is is not remote sensing no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah going out and ground truthing and being out in the field yeah field is awesome and what would you recommend uh, what's your piece of advice for someone who is interested in a navigator type position yeah, I mean, this is a very specific role, one that I didn't have any specific training for, but for depends on which route you go. I mean, you can go the maritime route, um, but if and do stuff with ships in general. But if you want to do this kind of work, um, at least in my case, going the route of understanding geospatial data. So GIS. Geographic information systems and science or remote sensing um, can get you introduced to some of the concepts that we're working with. Yeah, I think when I was growing up, I had no idea there were these maritime colleges. Mm -hmm. um, and now I think they're so cool. Yeah. So I don't, there's a uh, mass maritime, main maritime, Cal maritime. I don't know how many others there are. Yeah. But I would say that, and I think, yeah, I think this is the most important piece is just kind of be opportunistic. Sometimes people have hyper, hyper focused dreams on a really specific thing that is kind of, there are other p paths to get in that general realm and then maybe you, you make it there. But if you're, if I had been uh, super focused on cryospheric research, for example, then I wouldn't have branched out and done some of the multi-beam sonar work, the seafloor mapping stuff, and kind of evolved. I knew that I wanted to spend a lot of time in the field, and I knew I wanted to do science and exploration, and I think I, you could dead-end yourself if you're trying to do something extremely specific. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you.
We had a question about how far apart Argus and Hercules are. Right now, about the length of the tether, so about 30 meters. You can, uh, well, it's not up on the screen, but uh, we have cameras on the aft side of both vehicles looking down the tether, and right now it's pulled taut. Um, so they're both coming up at about the same uh, altitude or depth as as we ascend. <clears throat> kind of parallel to each other in the water column. Which camera is which, Jake, up there? Um, it's on Sat 3 right now. That is Hercules aft camera looking at Argus. In both views? Oh no! So yeah, that's oh. So the one on the live feed on satellite feed three is oh. uh, Hercules, um, oh. but the one on the right up on the screen in the van is Hercules aft camera, and the one on the left is uh, Argus. Okay. Only really way to tell it apart is that Hercules has two aft lights and Argus has one. So okay. So I can kind of determine that. Thank you. That's the uh, the tether in the middle there, and you can see how it's stretched out between. Yep. So what is the delta depth then that we get readouts on? Doesn't seem to match the length of the tether. So right now our delta depth is zero because it's measuring the vertical distance, the, the Z distance between the vehicles. So that the difference in their in their depths um, uh, it fluctuates a bit with the heave of um, Argus, uh, but it's right. We try to keep it around uh, zero. We try to keep the vehicles at the same depth as we ascend. Okay. One of our viewers is asking if we have, if any of you have ever experienced seismic activity while exploring. Uh, I have been out when there's been a, a big earthquake, but we did not uh, really notice it because open ocean is a great place to be if there's a tsunami. The really long period wave, you just kind of go slowly up and slowly down. But there was a cruise uh, a couple of years ago where they were down at a hydrothermal vent um, when a, there was an earthquake nearby. And they didn't really notice the earthquake because they were on hmm. a ship. But on the vent, all the shrimp that were on the vent at the same time came off the vent. Oh, wow. And then settled back down onto it. So, oh. Uh, yeah. They're used to it, probably. Do you think it's <laughs> a vibration they felt or something they heard? Acoustic. I think it was, uh, yeah, they felt they felt. Uh, you know, the shaking, and it startled them, and they all popped off the, huh. the C4, and then they kind of came back down. That's neat. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. I think it, to my knowledge, the first time that's ever been observed. Huh. We had a few questions about uh, the end of the season. This is not the last dive of the season, but this is the last expedition of the season. This is just dive number two, and how many more do we anticipate, Adam? Give the weather is favorable? Uh, we're going to do 26 more 11 <laughs> minute dives. <laughs> no, I think that uh, we'll probably get at least four or five more dives, hopefully. Uh, if weather holds, I think uh, we are out here. What's the date today? 12th. The 12th. So we have like seven more days. Uh, before we probably have to head back to port. Uh, and so try and get four or five in there. This last dive was a bit more than 24 hours. I think it was like 30 something. Uh, and I think that's probably where we're going to be living if we're going to try and do these traverses from base of the seamount to the top. Uh, so, yep, that's the plan. Did we ever get hitchhikers on Herc or Argus? 
that come back to the surface. Yeah. Sure. Uh, time I found a, a little angler fish in on the bottom of her. There's this wire mesh, which I guess is meant to prevent stuff from coming in from the bottom. But <laughs> I found a little angler fish stuck in there. Like the chana cubs? Uh, no, I think it it was a darker blue. It was from a totally different part of the oceans. Uh, and you know, you see the pictures of the angler fish, and they look like the fiercest thing yeah. you can see, but they're like <laughs> oh, it was one uh, of half a, you know, an inch long or something like that. <laughs> oh, wow. That's really cool. Last year on a dive, we had a, I think it was a hermit crab crawl onto the vehicle while we were um, sampling, and <laughs> it stayed on for like an entire watch and just like crawled around the vehicle. We, <laughs> we kept checking on it. Free ride. <laughs> that, were we... There was one where we, we didn't know where the crab went, and then oh, yeah. we're watching HD, and then its claw comes down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have any of you ever seen a great white? No. Sadly, no. No. <laughs> no? I have, but that's because I live on Cape Cod, and they swim around there all the time these days. Really? Mm. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, the seal population has really rebounded and so there's a ton of food and uh, beaches get closed every once in a while. Wow. Hmm. Good to know. A project I worked on uses acoustic fish tags and they've just started tagging uh, white sharks off of Rhode Island and uh, they're just off the coast. They don't come into the beaches but they've they've seen them like just a few miles offshore like a good good solid amount of them. Which wow. is Interesting. They don't come in as close as they do on Cape Cod, but huh. they're there. Yeah, one time I was at the just a local beach, and there was a big. Uh, I think they're called mola mola. Those big <gasps> the yeah. sunfish. sunfish. Yeah. yeah. But those, when they're up near the surface, they have something that sticks out of the water that kind of looks like a shark fish. <laughs> yeah. They're not supposed to come up to the surface, right? It's always. No, they float around and and near the near the surface. There, the we see them the out here. Yeah, weirdest okay. looking fish. <laughs> yeah, they sure are. That's actually another question from one of our viewers. What's the oddest looking sea creature that you know of? In Mola Mola. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> actually, look up the. I think it's like a baby Mola Mola. The what Mola Mola? A baby Mola Mola. Baby Mola Mola. I, Is it, I hope it's cute. Actually, it's oh my god, it looks just like Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't think it's... Oh. Yeah. I might be thinking of something else. Well, there's one picture that's actually quite adorable. Is it the little <laughs> tiny larval thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's like I think that's like a sun. The yeah. big eyes. Yeah, oh, yeah. It. What's What computer are you on? I'm on capture. That's crazy looking. Uh, it doesn't even look like a fish. What is that? That's not the one. That's not it. Is that that's, it? Yeah, that's it. There you go. That little tiny little thing. That's it. That's it. What is that? The baby mola mola. Baby that's mola mola. Baby mola mola. Look at it. Isn't that cute? That's adorable. There's that time that the baby mola mola imprinted on Rennie. Thought there it, it is. <laughs> 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 so that's the mola mole hanging out by the ship then. <laughs> it's my pet. <laughs> they come to the surface um, <clears throat> to have birds pick off some sort of parasite that's growing on them. So they just kind of lay oh. out. Like a little salon appointment. Yeah. yeah. You know, one weird thing I saw once was uh, Portuguese man o' war, which are those oh, yeah. jellies that have a little float on top. Yeah. yeah. But one had caught a bird. Oh, oh. Wow. And it was kind of slowly digesting it. Wow. wow. Aren't they like siphonophores or something? Aren't they? Think. Or they are something like that, <laughs> where they're a, it's a collection of animals rather yeah. than a, a single. Each po different polyps can be a different organism. Colonial. 
Is that a bird in its grips? Well, grips, it seems pretty passive, right? Like the bird just made a mistake and pushed up against it, and it was oh. stuck to it. Yeah. It wow. Poor bird. Rough day. Yeah. And the other cool thing when you're out here are uh, bonito, flying fish, especially when the winds pick up. Yeah. They, uh, they pop out of the water and oftentimes will kind of run into the side of the ship. I haven't seen them hit the ship. <laughs> I haven't seen them hit the ship. Yeah. Oh, really? You're like, whack, whack. <laughs> seen them on the back deck before, oh. very occasionally. I'm like, man, that must have, how'd you get up there? Oh, it's actually <laughs> up there. Interesting. Wow. Okay. Like perfect timing with like a ship roll and go right through one of the little holes on the side. To <laughs> It's fun when they're when you're up on the monkey deck and they're like zooming out away from the ship as yeah. we cruise along because they just like they go for like hundreds of yards. Yeah, yeah. they're just gliding along. They that's do this. Really they cool. like bounce on the waves so they can actually go even further. I yeah, forget wow. the, I forget the recorded the maximum recorded distance, but I meant to go out last night where the wire goes over the side of the ship and we have lights on it. Usually that's where you get like squid and bonito. We had a bunch of sharks yeah. last cruise that were kind of hanging around there. Yeah. And squid. Quite a bit yeah. of squid too. Like squid, yeah. We had quite the squid storm on one of our ascents. We yeah, they're just like, inking that's us. That's a little traumatizing. <laughs> <laughs> one of our viewers is asking if Argus should have a problem during the dive, can Hercules continue the dive or does it need to return to the surface? Uh, it depends on the problem, but usually we, once we go down together, we come up together. So, I think that's the capex because it's in the down cam too. It's not in the HD. Trevor said it's the camera. The it focus. But it's also in the down cam in the in the. Oh, it was. The utility cam. Thing is the capex. All right. I know you've all been blue water situation before so you've been probably asked before but been, we have a request for your best slash worst sea critter joke oh we've got some time <laughs> i just want to hear these i don't i don't have one <laughs> yeah i don't have one either but i'm i'm thinking of one right now <laughs> Unsuccessfully. <laughs> Google. <laughs> I know you got one, Rennie. Yeah, Rennie. Rennie's cooking something up. Over I don't know. It's more in the moment. I can't just... <laughs> can't just just comes one. naturally. Yeah. All right. While you're thinking, one of our viewers who has just recently joined is asking again about how uh, Herc, the tether versus thruster situation... For the ascent? Um, uh, sorry, in what way? Uh, can you just explain how Herc and Argus are ascending? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so Herc has six thrusters on it, and we are using the vertical thrusters to um, kind of achieve ascent. And then for Argus, we have a, it's connected to the ship with a steel 6 8 cable. So we're hauling in on a winch and bringing Argus up through the water column. There has to be a joke about six eight cables here, guys. <laughs> it's a tall cable. Tall is a tall cable. It's six eight. Huh. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> I didn't get that. Does that fall into the good category or the worst category? <laughs> Yeah, ROV jokes are a whole different uh, ball game yeah. than, than fish jokes. <laughs> mm. Oh, we have one from one of our viewers. With fronds like those, who needs an enemies? Oh, <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Good. Oh.
You could do like Valentine's Day cards between the vehicles, like they're tethered together. I don't know. <laughs> tethered forever. <laughs> tethered forever. There you go. Well. Hopefully. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Until <Soon>. demob. Um. <laughs> like so, uh, Ramula Gorgia and uh, Chris Dance Gorgia all. walk into a bar. <laughs> That's as far as I got, but. <laughs> You're on to something. So you got the setup there, Adam? Yeah. <laughs> so bring it home, Jess. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just wondering if you got the punchline. I gotta see if I have any in my joke list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had one. I have one last cruise. You keep a. <clears throat> Notes document of your jokes? Oh, uh, just, just <laughs> a couple jokes. If I, you know, <laughs> I wish I wrote them all down, but some of them. <laughs> uh, Chris Kelly was in the back row, and we were talking about the co uh, coral and rock sampling, and, uh, and he said we might need a sponge to round things off. And I said, I don't know, it doesn't seem like enough grit because <laughs> <laughs> it's too soft. Yeah. Uh, can can ran, can yep, round it off. Round enough. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sponges. Yeah. I think we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Jess's toothpick joke uh, yesterday. Oh, yeah. Was, uh, oh, thank you. Uh, thank was you. Better Dave. than that. <laughs> <laughs> Urchins could eat whatever they want because they always had enough toothpicks. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Dave brought it home. <laughs> Giving you full credit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Rennie, weren't you telling us urchin came from a land based. Oh, porcupine. Yeah, and I could be mis. mis it could be the other way around. I don't know. I could oh. be misremembering. Huh. Somebody want to fact check that one? All right, favorite ocean-based TV show? Octonauts. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, I have some from you, some jokes in here from you from years ago, Adam. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Don't. Maybe we were get, the, get the <clears throat> buzzer ready. We were measuring the temperature. Of <laughs> we had a temperature probe out, and we were measuring the uh, temperature of these cold seeps, I think, on the seafloor. And it kept... It was like four in the morning or something. This is not even funny at the time. No, it's not funny now. <laughs> but at the, nor time, at the time. <laughs> nor at the time was it funny, but we still laughed. But we kept moving out, and the temperature was dropping. And, for, and you said, if I linearly extrapolate, I think this next temperature reading should be negative 68. And we all <laughs> lost it. <laughs> like, there was no need. And then... And then we said, this is making the cover of Temperature Probe Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Again, these are the 4 a.m. jokes. That yeah, you... yeah. They don't, they, uh, they don't hold up as well. <laughs> no, they don't really hold up. It's a good attempt, though. Attempt? <laughs> TV shows? Love Boat. Mm. <laughs> SpongeBob. <Love> SpongeBob. <laughs> the granddaddy of them all, Sea Hunt. Ooh. Which one was it? Sea Hunt. Mm. It's what introduced many of us to the concept of scuba diving. I saw all of the Gilligan's Island episodes. Nice. Oh. Very nice. All of them? Isn't I'm sure I did. We yeah. only got one channel. <laughs> <laughs> Gilligan's Island channel? <laughs> mm. I used to watch the snorks growing up. Mm. The snorks. That it was like bell. the Smurfs, but undersea. Yeah. <laughs> what? How did I miss that? Snorks. I remember snorks. I had sea monkeys growing up. Did you guys have sea monkeys? Sea monkeys? What channel was that on? Yeah. I did too. The little. He just had physical. I, I, yeah, I was talking. Shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yes. I did too. We grew them in. We grew them in the guest bathroom. Hmm. <laughs> Purposefully, or Is was it just true? in the? Yeah, tank? if you got if you got comic books, they always had the ads where you could 
send your money away and yeah. buy them. And they had like little treats and you could buy little harnesses to put on them, <laughs> take them for a walk. Right next to the x-ray goggles. X yeah. yeah. I'm imagining like a sea pig, but shaped like a monkey. It's I don't know. It's this tiny little plankton <laughs> thing, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. How did you get a leash on the sea pig? <laughs> I don't you know. think they did. It was always a disappointment. <laughs> Randy, to come back to your urchins and porcupines thing. Oh, you're, uh, oh, you're on it over there. Urchins, sea urchins get their name from an old English word for the spiny hedgehog. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I remembered something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I needed that answer. <laughs> A sea hedgehog. That's kind of, yeah. that's what we should call them, sea hedgehogs. One of our viewers says there was a Sea Monkeys TV show or movie. I no. missed that. Mm. I did too. Was not on our one channel. Here's one from our viewers. What did the fisherman say to the magician? Mm. Mm. Vada Kedabra. <laughs> Pick a cod, yeah. any cod. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think that one's from Maine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. The viewer says in Dutch, an urchin is actually called a sea hedgehog. Yes. Oh. What? The what? Dutch have it right. <laughs> Anybody dream about caramelized Whoa. potatoes last night? <laughs> it was not caramelized. Aww. It was caramel potatoes. <laughs> that was the innovation there. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Ooh. Oh, hello. Oh, can I hear her death sound? It's following us a little. No. Whoa. It's like a ribbon. On a great recipe last night for caramel potatoes. BettyCrocker.com. Oh. Betty Crocker. Danish, Can't go wrong with Betty. Betty Crocker. Danish caramel potatoes. <laughs> and best served with roast pork and cabbage. Yeah. Roast nice. pork and cabbage. Yeah, that, and our uh, our friend uh, from I Denmark like had mentioned uh, oven roasted pork uh, and duck, and it's. And they had the the almond thing where if you got the full almond. Oh yeah. You got a prize. Yeah. I think all food should be that way. So I've downloaded this recipe and I'm going to go. <laughs> I'm now obsessed with Danish caramel potatoes. Yeah, let us know how it goes there, Dave. I will. The whole almond seems a little safer than. What is it in the king cake, the little plastic baby? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's okay. right. Yeah. There used to be one, a little plastic baby in that wooden box over there from a king cake. <coughs> I think it's gone now. Huh. Just to bring things full circle. <laughs> <laughs> one of our viewers enjoyed the undersea world of Jacques oh, Cousteau. Oh, we still have the baby. <laughs> the baby's well, in the control room. Oh, yeah, look. There it is. <laughs> All right, see? Now we need an almond to put next to it. <laughs> I have some. They're sriracha almonds. Will that work? Yeah. <laughs> Something nice Actually, you can just pass those around to the front row. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll bring them to the next, next watch shift. <laughs> Oh yeah. What was the other viewer question? Uh oh, Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau. Anybody remember that one? Absolutely. Oh, I wish I did. Absolutely. Watch that on watch the specials on TV. Uh, I remember watching some specials as well. And then uh went to the movies to see something, uh, a Disney uh, cartoon I think of some kind, but uh one of the shorts was called World Without Sun. Uh, which I thought sounded really cool because I was a science fiction fan. 
and thought it was uh, probably some sort of science fiction uh, thing like Forbidden Planet or something like that. But it was a Jacques Cousteau documentary uh, about uh, Alvin. Science and, uh, fact. I was really wow. interested in that. And later on, uh, when I first went to sea, I met a couple of Alvin pilots, and they were like, I was just in awe of people going down in this <laughs> lead saucer. Yeah. Got an Alvin pilot joke. Turn it into a Herc pilot joke. All right, do it. How do you know when a Herc pilot comes into the room? Don't worry, they'll tell you. <laughs> 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 That's uh, kind of true for, yeah. One of our viewers is asking if you can see Herc and Argus going back on the ship from control van videos. Yes. Yep. We have uh, a couple okay. cameras. <clears throat> and when was the last time Mini Herc, Little Herc was used? That would have been shakedown of last year, I think, right? Is that right? Not this year. I don't think it was used this year at all. No. And if you're watching the cameras on the quad view, you'll be able to see the view of the deck as the ROVs are brought back up. And then you can watch samples being processed in a wet lab, which is pretty cool. Keep sending your questions. <laughs> or your jokes. Yeah, yeah. or recipes. I'm going to clear this. Sure thing. The question, are Hercules lights on or off right now? They're currently on. Yeah, otherwise it'd be quite dark. Yeah. yeah there's no light until just about a couple, couple hundred meters deep. Yeah. And even then, the, it's pretty dim until you get closer to the surface. Yeah. There's a shot from uh, Argus looking back at Herc. You can see Herc's lights on satellite feed three. What are some other cool things you've seen during ascent or descent? We there was a pilot whale on the way down on the first dive, I believe. That's what I heard. Yeah. I missed the pilot whale, or maybe that was the thing that I was calling a dolphin. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw. Uh, Sharks, last expedition, a lot. Um, squids. 